Hello and welcome to my November plan with me. My name is Dana and I'm very happy to have you here today. So first off, we're gonna start with a little flip through of my October setup. I did like a leaves theme for fall. It was really cute. I like how it turned out. It was pretty simple to keep up with. There are only a couple different shapes. If you have not checked that one out and you wanna do leaves for November, I will link it and you can watch that video too. So for November, I decided to go with a tea theme for a couple of reasons. One, November is when it's really starting to get cold out, so a nice hot drink is always good. And personally, I am a big tea drinker, and I've definitely been getting back into drinking tea right around this time of year. So for my setup, I used a couple of colors. I used this pastel yellow, a couple of shades of teal, some brown for the tea, and a green. And I kind of wanted to go with like a faded pastel kind of china-y idea. I was using the teal for some of the shadows. I'm not sure if it really gave the effect that I was going for, but I think it came out cool. I pretty much used the same couple of mugs, kettles, and tea bags throughout the setup. And you'll see the first two of those on my cover and quote page. And I kept the drawings pretty simple and easy to replicate. So for my quote page, I drew one of the three kettle designs I did. This one is more of like a circular kettle. And what I did was I drew pouring out of it the words, take time for yourself. This isn't really a quote, I guess. It's just kind of a phrase that I thought went well with this theme because I think kind of sitting down and making a cup of tea is like a nice little thing you can do for yourself to relax. I decided to color the kettle in yellow to match the mug on the cover page. This kettle is pretty easy to replicate once you just look at the shapes. It's really a big circle that kind of has a flat part added to it at the bottom, a long C for the handle, half a circle on top for the lid, and a backwards J for the spout. And this is kind of the idea that I use for all of the kettles throughout the setup. Some of them, you just kind of make the shapes a little different, which I'll show you when I get to those. And that's the first two pages done. Next up is my November calendar spread. And since I like to start my weeks on Mondays, my calendar kind of ended up having a lot more lines than if you had started on Sunday because the first day of November is a Sunday, so I ended up kind of making some of my box dimensions a little bit different, which I usually do seven by seven, but I think my top and bottom ones are a little bit shorter so I could squeeze them in. Then I went through and I drew all of my different tea symbols, so I drew tea bags, different shaped mugs and kettles, and I spaced them out throughout the top so they were at different angles, and some you could only see the top half and others you could only see the bottom half to kind of give it some interest and have everything kind of facing different directions to switch it up. In my October setup, I switched up my YouTube tracker and added it onto my calendar spread and I liked that so I decided to keep that for this month. So in the bottom space that I had below the calendar, I put three sections, one for my subscriber count, watch time and views that I'll put on the first of the month and the 30th. And next to it, which you'll see, I draw a tea bag and then in the little, I don't know what you call it, the tea label, I guess, I drew the little YouTube symbol. Then I went back in with all of my different colors using the brown to kind of draw a little bit of tea sitting at the bottom of the bags, the different shades of yellow, teal, and green to draw on the tea labels, the mugs, and the kettles, adding in different designs and stripes to keep them interesting. For the mugs to keep them looking different from one another and keep the spreads more interesting, I used the same basic shapes for all of them, but I would make some wider and fatter, some shorter, some taller, and I wouldn't always add the little base on the bottom. I also changed up the shape of the handle, some of them being a C and some looking more like an S. 
for the kettles, I did some in a circle shape like you saw on my quote page, others with more angular lines to make them kind of look like a hexagon, and then the one I'm coloring in now, I split into different ovals and colored them in with different shades of teal. For some reason, I feel like no matter how many times I check my boxes and look at an example of the calendar, I always add one too many. So for my extra box, I just put a little arrow and wrote to December. Then I filled in the labels for my YouTube tracker and my calendar spread was finished. For my next two pages, I have my mood tracker and a gratitude tracker. I did a gratitude spread for the first time in October, combining it with my mood tracker, and I like doing that a lot. So for this month, I decided to separate them out and give my gratitude space its own full page. So for my mood tracker, I drew out 30 different mugs tea bags and kettles. So I have this pretty sped up, but this gives you a good example of what I mean about using different shapes to kind of give some diversity to using the same three objects. I think this spread will look really cool when it's finished and when I color it, I don't think I'm going to color them all solid colors. I might draw different patterns on the mugs and the kettles. I kept my gratitude spread pretty simple. I just left 30 different spots to write something, but I did put a little pun at the bottom writing 30 things to be grateful for and added a little doodle with a kettle, mug, and tea bag. For the kettle and the mug, I used the same kind of bold teal shadows that I did on my cover page. And here are those spreads finished. My next two spreads are my pretty cut and dry spending, tracker, and due date spread. These are usually pretty simple, but I think I did something cute with the spending tracker doodles. For my cash and card labels, I drew two tea bags and I made the labels pretty big and I labeled them cash and card. Is that more? My due date spread, I added some simple doodles at the top and then filled in all of the due dates that I have right now for the month of November. And I like to add a space in between them just in case I get something added. And I don't put in like weekly homework assignments that I know I have every week. It's just different like painting projects, assignments that are out of the ordinary and exams that I have that I'll add on here. Last but not least, I have my first spread of November, which I did mess up because it's actually November 2nd to the 8th, not 2nd to the 9th, but I will fix that before the end of the spread. One of my favorite go-to weekly setups is just making four 
horizontal columns on each side, one for each day of the week, combining the weekend together, a section for my to-do list, and next week. I think this gives me a lot of space to write, especially as a student. I feel like I need a lot of space on my days to write down any notes that I have, my schedule, what I have upcoming next week with assignments that I have to keep in mind, and also a running to-do list. Again, I used the same tea bag, mug, and kettle doodles on the side to give a nice little intro to each section and give a cute doodle. And I tried to, since these were bigger, add more patterns and things like that to keep them interesting. Here is where I realized that the week actually ends on the 8th, but lucky for me, a 9 to an 8 is not the hardest switch to make. All right, here is my final flip through for my November setup. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you are a big tea drinker, comment down below some recommendations. I'm pretty much open to any type of tea. Let me know what you think I should do for December. Just so you guys know, I am Jewish, so I probably won't be doing any sort of Christmas theme. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you are not already. Stay tuned for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway, and I hope to see you in the next one.